Okay, hi, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to Viva Mondo's webinar, first one of 2020. Um, I am here today with the wonderful, talented uh, people of AMDA. Um, we, I think they're all situated in LA at the moment, sunny LA, which is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just wanted to introduce you to them. Of course, this is one of three of their webinars in the next few months. Uh, please register to all three to find out all of the tips possible for a uh, performing arts school. Um, I'm just going to orient you guys a little bit about Zoom and how to use the application. Uh, we are streaming live on our Facebook page. So hello to the Salal du Estudente followers. Um, but at the moment, I just want to let you guys know that Viva Mondo actually exists to help students um, you know, with the information and details required to find a school that suits them. Um, so I'm excited to let you know that all the questions, if you want to ask any questions, will be answered from the question box below. Um, please do not ask anything in the chat. Everything should hopefully be recorded in the question box and we can get to that right at the end um, of the webinar. So I am going to hand it over to you guys in LA. Hi there, thank you so much for having us. No problem. <laughs> My name is Wendy Rosoff and I am on faculty at the AMDA LA campus. I teach musical theater on camera, acting as well as dance. I'm one of the few hybrid faculty members here. And I'm Marianne Zines. I'm the assistant director of admissions. I've been here at AMDA for just over 10 years and we're excited to speak with you today. So should we get going with our PowerPoint to begin? Yes, please go, go ahead. That'd be great. Perfect. So AMDA is the American Musical and Dramatic Academy, also known as AMDA College of the Performing Arts. We're located in New York City, in Manhattan, and also in Los Angeles in historic Hollywood. Wendy and I are sitting right across from Capitol Records <laughs> right now. And We've been around for over 55 years and we offer 11 programs that we want to tell you about. And then we're going to get into mastering your audition and how to go about applying to AMDA and knowing exactly what to do to audition for the school. So we have four bachelor's degree programs in the areas of acting, music theater, dance theater, and performing arts and also three associate's degree programs. So when you see AOS, that's for Associates of Occupational Studies in acting, music theater, and dance theater. And we also have a Bachelor of Arts in Theater Arts. Perfect. Great, so we're gonna show a brief video that describes a little bit about what your audition experience for AMDA might be like, and then we can talk about that a little bit more in detail. Hi, my name is Adrian, and I graduated from AMDA's New School Theater Conservatory program. We're here at the Los Angeles campus in Hollywood to show you exactly what it's like to audition for acceptance into AMDA. After registration, everyone is divided into three groups, dance, musical theater, and acting. Now comes the time to have fun and show off your talent to our team of friendly adjudicators. It really wasn't as nerve-wracking as people would think. They're, the judge is very friendly, the accompanist is also, it's, it's really it's a really comfortable environment. It went well. Definitely nothing to be anxious about. Overall, very inviting and yeah. Hi, my name is Raina Benedict. I'm the Associate Chair of Dance at AMDA Los Angeles. And this may be your first professional audition. We know that, <laughs> and it's okay. That's why you're coming to school. So don't be nervous. And know that we're on your side, and we want to see the best possible you that there is. How would you describe the process today? It's nerve-wracking as auditioning for a, a school or something you're going to be spending a couple of years in your life doing as relaxed as it could be. Before the dancers perform their solo pieces, we come in here to warm up. I feel good, actually. Um, I think I rushed a little, but I feel good. I feel confident. Hopefully, I'll make it. After you're done with your audition, you get to meet one-on-one -on -one with an AMDA admissions rep who will guide you through the admissions process, and they'll make sure that you have all the information that you need. So that's it. Now you know what it takes to nail your AMDA audition. So get to work, and we'll see you at the next one. <laughs> Thank you. 
Great. So hopefully that showed you a little bit about what the process is like. And as Marina said in the video, one of the things that you can count on in your audition process is that we genuinely want you to succeed. And we're not looking for you to be perfect. What we're looking for is for you to be prepared and to be invested and to show us who you are as an individual. It's super important to us that we're able to really get to know you in your audition because one of the things that makes AMDA so unique is that we don't have to have a certain quota of a particular kind of performer or a particular type of dancer. We we're attracted to individual talent. And so we're looking for potential. Um, and so because all of the adjudicators from AMDA are also faculty members who are professional working actors, singers, and dancers, we are actually the older version of you. And we know exactly what it feels like to be doing what you're doing right now. <clears throat> so you can take a breath and relax knowing that. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the specifics of what you're gonna to wanna to bring into your audition and how the best way to prepare for that is. If you're auditioning for acting, just so that you know what to prepare, you'll prepare two monologues, each approximately two minutes in length, no one sitting there with a stopwatch, so it doesn't have to be exactly that, but approximately two, min two minutes in length for each one. And the material that you choose should be from published plays. Wendy will get into a little bit more on that as we go through all this. If you're auditioning for music theater, you'll choose a song that's 32 bars. Bring your sheet music with you and the key that you're going to sing your song in. You'll have the opportunity to run through your song with an accompanist before you audition. So it won't feel like you're doing it for the first time. Whenever you audition, you will have been through kind of a tempo check or mini warm up before your audition happens. And for music theater students, you'll also need a monologue just like actors have, you'll only have one monologue, also approximately two minutes in length, and it should also be from a published play or musical. If you're auditioning for dance theater, we'd like to see 60 to 90 seconds of a solo piece that you choose. We'd like to see your primary style be in ballet, jazz, contemporary, or modern. Great. Yeah, I'm going to tag on and just backtrack a little bit and go through each one of those disciplines a little bit more specifically from the perspective of uh, the adjudicator. So one of the things that happens is that we want to do the best job that we can do. So we tackle a giant piece of material um, because that somehow equates being better, but less really is more. So do yourself a favor and choose material that number one you connect to that you find some sort of connection to the character and number two choose something that's a minute to a minute and a half we can see everything that we need to in that time period and not only that then we have a chance in the audition to give you adjustments to talk about the character to maybe have you do it again with some of the stuff that we've discussed and that's super helpful for us to get to know you as an artist so don't be afraid of cutting down your monologues to a 90 second cut that's actually super ideal for us what's also really helpful for us is if you choose more contemporary material. Uh, having one Shakespeare or Chekhov or Ibsen piece, fantastic. But if you can give us some contrasting material, if you're attracted to the Shakespearean material, the classical material, have one contemporary piece in your pocket ready to go. And that should again be from a published piece of material. Um, for your musical theater audition, it's best to find sheet music and have it sung through before your audition plenty of times with either a coach or you can go online and find people that will play the piano for you in the key that your music is written in and make sure that that sheet music sounds just like how you've memorized the song. You're gonna to wanna to give yourself a nice, strong starting place on your song. So make sure that you get either a bell tone that gives you the tone that you're gonna start singing on or a nice introduction that you're familiar with so that you get a nice, confident start on that song. 
And again, less is more, right? So if you are doing a full song, if the whole song is a 32 bar cut, that's wonderful. And that's about, again, 90 seconds or so, a minute and a half, two minutes. But we don't need to see five, five minutes of material. It's actually really helpful for it to be cut down. So again, we can work with you and get to know you as an artist. Um, and then lastly, Marianne was talking about the dance audition. Yes, you're going to bring in a solo of uh, a piece that you feel fantastic about. So whatever your strength is, is what you're going to want to lead with. If you have a specialty strength that you'd like to show us, absolutely come prepared to show us that. So if you are a strong tap dancer or a hip hop dancer or a Haitian dancer or a belly dancer, we want to see all that. When you're done performing your solos in your dance audition, the adjudicator will also be going through a series of exercises with you just to take a look at what your technique is and how much background you have in any given discipline. That doesn't mean that we're not interested in you if you come from a pure beginning background. We're looking for potential and uh, your instrument and what you can do. So don't be nervous about any of that. We're just arming you with all the material we can to set you up for success. So a little more on what to do to prepare for your audition. Absolutely. So you're going to want to spend some time choosing your material. Find something that makes your heart sing, that you really relate to. As an adjudicator and as an actor myself, I recommend that you find a character that's no more than five years older than you are. Find somebody who has a life experience that you can relate to at this point in your life. And then you're going to want to memorize that material. Now listen, auditions can be scary and nerve wracking for some people. So memorizing the material is key so that when those nerves start for you, you don't lose the material. Um, and I also wanted to speak really briefly while we're here about uh, one of the questions that was asked of us before this webinar began was, what do you do when you have a foreign accent, but you're performing a monologue in English? That's an excellent question and my answer is slow down don't be afraid to slow down what you're saying so that you can actually articulate the words in a way that feel comfortable for you and don't worry about it we understand that english might be your second language and we actually have an entire voice and speech department here at amda that's dedicated to accent reduction so don't be scared of that and don't be intimidated by it. Just let yourself slow down so that we can understand the text while you're auditioning. The next thing you're going to want to do after you've memorized is rehearse it. So rehearsal means more than just memorizing your piece. What's going on in the piece? Read the published text, the play that this little monologue that you've chosen comes from and understand the character's point of view, how the character is feeling. If you're talking to a character, what's your relationship with the character? Where are you? Environment. What happened right before this monologue began that's making you say your very first line? All of these things are great things to ask yourself before you go into the audition. So that way you're feeling nice and comfortable and you've already set up a history for yourself. You're not just spewing the lines. And then the last thing I want to talk about is how to dress for this audition. I don't want you to be concerned about coming in and buying a new dress or buying a suit or anything like that for your audition. We're here to see you at your best. So you're going to dress in a way that feels comfortable and casual, but also it, as your best self. Um, not, not like a business meeting at all, but how you feel best represents yourself right now. Um, so you're going to want to come with nice, clean press clothing in a way that best represents yourself. No giant pieces of jewelry that are going to be distracting or maybe jangling through your audition. And um, ladies' hair and makeup, however you want to do that, wonderful, great. But you don't need to have a full face of makeup or feel the need to do anything that feels unnatural for you. We really are looking for who you are in your authenticity at this moment. And now, how to own your confidence during your audition. Oh, this is a good one. It's one of my favorite things to talk about. What is being confident? It's tricky. 
because sometimes we want to present as confident, but we're not feeling confident. So how do we get ourselves to feel confident? Well, for me as an actor, the way that I feel actor is to uh, a confident as an actor is to be as prepared as possible. That confidence comes from a sense of knowing exactly what I'm doing and that I've already put in the work. But in addition to that, there's a lot of different ways that we can bring confidence into the audition with us and show that we're feeling confident. So how your posture is when you come into the room, how your shoulders are, are you really engaged and physically present in the room with us? Making sure that you're speaking in a clear tone and you're projecting enough so that the entire room can hear you. That's super important because we want to see all of the beautiful work that you prepared. Make sure that your head is up. Oftentimes when we go into an audition and we get a little nervous about things, we start to look down and not make eye contact. Making eye contact is extremely important in terms of having a connection and a feeling of humanity in between us. And that's what we're looking for in the audition. And also focusing. And focusing can mean a lot of different things, but for the purpose of the audition process, it's stilling yourself and your energy enough so that you can do all of the work that you came here to do and that we can also participate in the audition with you and have a conversation and feel like we're getting to know you just a little bit more. So next, what anti-adjudicators are looking for in your audition mm. and then do you as an artist? <laughs> Great. professionalism. What does professionalism look like? Well, that's a great question because auditioning for AMBA, you probably haven't had a professional experience yet, and we don't expect that at all. But what we do expect is for you to come in and act as though you have prepared and that you're wanting to be there and that you've read the directions on the website and you've taken the care and the time to look at the directions and follow them as closely as possible and bring all of the things that we've asked for and suggested to your audition that you've done your very best with what you know. That's what professionalism looks like, showing up and being prepared. Know why you want to audition. So I ask this question a lot to my potential students. Why are you here and what are you looking for? And that question takes a little bit of thought on your part. So think about that for yourself. Why are you interested not only in auditioning for AMDA, but in the arts in general? What about doing this makes your heart sing and makes you feel differently from anything else that you do? Follow the instructions. So as I mentioned, uh, on the website, there are tons of instructions and you'll also be contacted by an admissions advisor to talk you through the process as well. And if you have any questions at all, you can always contact somebody and we're more than happy to give you any answers to questions that you may not be clear on. You're definitely going to want to introduce yourself when you walk into the room in a nice, clear, confident voice and accept criticism graciously. So this is a big one because criticism actually is us taking interest in you. When you're feeling maybe criticized or getting an adjustment or a note we say here, that means that something about what you've done has intrigued us and we want to know more about you. So now we're going to see if we can make an adjustment because that's part of being an artist. The life of an artist is to come in and do one thing and then have somebody go, that's great, let's try it another way. And you going, great, I'm in the sandbox with you. I'm in a play. We're playing, we are in a collaboration. So try not to take anything that you hear in your audition personally at all. In fact, if you're hearing some sort of adjustment or criticism, it means that you've piqued our interest. And make sure that you thank your panelists and your admissions person at the end of your audition. Um, it's just a great way to end our relationship for the day. So you're probably wondering what common mistakes to avoid. So we'll go over that oh. as well. <laughs> oh, these are good ones. So right. here's what you should avoid. <laughs> cool. Um, so you want to stay away from material that you don't understand. And that means emotionally or intellectually. So a lot of times there's material that may not be appropriate 
for you because you have no understanding or context on that yet, and that's okay. So if you read something and you find it confusing, don't just kind of look over that. Make sure that you either go through that material and you're able to get to the bottom of what's going on or choose something else that you do understand. Don't be afraid to make different choices in material if you don't understand that material. Overt sexual references. So certain material have sexual references to it that are key to the story and are key to the monologue. And if you must choose that because of the rest of the monologue is absolutely your top pick, then you may use that, but don't let the sexuality of the monologue drive the piece. And if you find something that you're equally passionate about that does not have all of the sexual references to it, then you may want to choose something else for a university audition. Excessive profanity, same thing. Same exact idea as the sexual uh, uh, references in that if there is one or two pieces of profanity and it's in the style of the author and it's an iconic piece of material that you're super passionate about doing, then you may do that. But there is no reason to do a piece that is laced with profanity just because you think that that sparks up emotion or passion. There's so many amazing ways to spark up emotion and passion without using the profanity. So if it's not necessary, don't do it. Okay, portraying victims or perpetrators of violence, addiction, and abuse. You know, there's a saying in the acting world that there's nothing more boring than watching a victim. And the reason for that is because we are attracted to survivors and thrivers. We want to see people that are fighting for their lives. It's what makes the work exciting. So if you can find anything that stirs up in you that excitement of fighting for the right thing or fighting for the underdog or surviving something difficult, instead of taking a look at it and going, that's a terrible set of circumstances, this person is a victim. No, how does this person survive and thrive from all of the mishaps in their life? Take a look at it from that angle. You're gonna find a lot more exciting choices. Monologues from films. We definitely encourage you strongly to perform pieces from published plays. For our purposes and the audition purpose, it's way more effective for us. And there's so much great material out there. Don't be afraid to do some digging. And the material from the internet that is not sourced from an original play or a published play rather. So there are a lot of monologue books out there that can have super fun monologue pieces in them, snippets. The reason why we're interested in you choosing something from a published play is because it gives you all sorts of information. It is your, that play becomes your library of the history of the monologue and you can make all sorts of choices based on that play. So use something that you can read in its entirety, and you should, you should always read a play in its entirety if you're doing a piece from it, so that you can understand why the character that you've chosen is saying and feeling the things that they're saying and feeling and doing in this moment. So now we're gonna take your questions. Okay, I think um, you guys had a few questions prepared for the FAQs, possibly that have been already asked from the registrants. So maybe do you want to go through a few of those? So I actually already addressed the accent question. That was one of the questions that was asked. Um, and again, just to reiterate that, if you do have a thick accent right now and you're doing a piece in English, do not be afraid, do not be discouraged. We can see past that and look to the work itself and what it is that you're actually communicating with all of the other work that you've put into the piece, which is probably why preparation is gonna be so important for you. But again, AMDA has a stellar voice and speech and accent reduction faculty, so don't be afraid of that. And the other question we had was about Scholarships. So what AMDA offers, well, first of all, whenever you're auditioning, you're auditioning not only for acceptance, but also for the AMDA National Merit Scholarship. And that scholarship range is anywhere from $1,000 to $15,000 per academic year. 
AMDA also considers international students for the International Student Grant. If you're accepted to AMDA, then the financial aid department and your admissions advisor will work with you one-on-one -on -one as you go through the international grant application process. So then you would finally, as an accepted student, get an award package and we would review that with you and your family and give you the best guidance possible over your journey to get to enroll at AMDA. We encourage you to focus on your audition at this point and on your application materials. We do need an application, a letter of recommendation, an essay, your academic record, or as we call it, transcript, and proof of English proficiency. I think we had a question come in. Yeah, I just saw a question come in too. <laughs> Great. Can we uh, pop over to that? Sure. So they are asking Mary Lupe Galindo, uh, do you have any courses like six months or something? So I think they're asking how long the courses actually are. So per semester, when you're enrolled at AMDA, each semester is 15 weeks long. Um, and that we have a constantly rolling. Um, it's ad called rolling admissions. Rolling admissions, mm -hmm. thank you, yeah. And our programs are four-year or two-year programs. So the bachelor's degree programs, the Bachelor of Fine Arts are eight semesters long. So a semester is just referring to a term, like Wendy said, and a term is four months long. So that typically at ANDA refers to fall, spring, summer. Those would be examples of semesters. And so it takes eight semesters to complete the bachelor's degree and to complete the certificate or associate's degree, those are four semesters long. So those can take anywhere from one year and six months to two years to complete. So typically you'll hear those referred to as two-year or four-year programs, although at AMDA they can be completed a little bit faster than that if you take advantage of each season in the calendar year that we offer a term or semester. Other questions? Okay, um, I think that's great. I feel like you guys have covered everything um, in the last 20 minutes. So I don't know if you guys have anything else to add. We were just taking a look. Oh, that's it. Okay, great. We, we thought we saw another question come in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you know, in terms of your audition process, what I say is just make sure that you bring your whole heart into the room with you. Be as authentic as you can in a very unnatural set of circumstances, which we completely understand and know that we at AMDA are 100% in your corner when you're auditioning. Awesome. Okay. Well, I think, thank you so, so much for um, your presentation and answering all the questions. It's great to have you. Um, thank you. Thanks to, to the attendees for actually asking a question or two. Um, and of course, remember, do look at stephenmondo.com if you want to find out more about AMDA as well. Um, and yeah, I guess that's, that's it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Have a great day, guys. Thank you.